Alright, so in this video I'm going to briefly cover the builds that I used to farm artifice armor and high stat armor in general uh, on my hunter this week. I put out a video um, yesterday or the day before uh, for farming Warlord's Ruin on Titan uh, for the first encounter. So if you want you can go to the channel, check that out, and I would also appreciate it if you subbed. Uh, like the videos, comment, you know, you guys know that I'm pretty much always replying to people in the comments section. Uh, because I'm a smaller channel, you know, I actually have time to do this and I like engaging with people, uh, so I'd appreciate that. Um, but in this video, I wanted to go over not just the hunter builds that I use, and actually I'm not really going to go into the builds because um, I've got more that I want to talk about here with uh, what to do with all the armor that you get uh, from your farm and how to make the farm better overall by taking other factors into consideration, right? Um, I will say that in Warlord's Ruin, the artifice armor is not that great. Um, I've, I've gotten maybe 25 pieces of artifice armor over the last, well, this week, and uh, not a single piece over 65. And at that, out of the 25, maybe three or four pieces sitting at 65. Um, previously, like, I've got duality pieces and I've got Spire the Watcher pieces that are 67 plus the mod slot. So it basically makes them, you know, 70 at base uh, armor. You're not going to get that out of the first encounter of Warlord's Ruin. So just so you know that up front. Uh, but still, if you can get some 64, 65 that brings you up to 67 68 that's basically the highest stat legendary armor that you can get right you can get 68 legendary stat uh, legendary armor uh, so definitely hold on to 64 plus uh, for artifice armor um, and depending where you're at with your own builds you might want to hold on to all of your artifice armor because it definitely has a lot of flexibility um, but yeah, generally speaking, the builds that I used here, uh, I ended up settling on just using Assassin's Cowl the whole time with no swaps. Uh, it has the most amount of survivability. Um, you're going to generally on LFG or Fireteam Finder, you're not going to be one phasing the boss, right? I, I one phased it on Titan with a couple of random people. Um, but that's like, you know, out of like the 30 or 40 runs that I've done, you know, I only got like one one phase. Right, so it just it depends on who you end up with in Fireteam Finder. Um, like these are all no mic runs, you know, we're just kind of like doing it semi casually. So I would say generally you're going to two to three phase the boss, right? And people are going to be dying. There's going to be a couple wipes here and there. It's not the end of the world, but um, so that's why I ended up just settling on using Assassin's Cowl uh, the entire time on Hunter. I was doing swaps between, like, I would start with Assassin's Cowl, and then I would swap over to Celestial Nighthawk, pop my Golden Gun, miss, and then realize, well, okay, well, is it, is it really worth it? No. Uh, I didn't, obviously, I, I, I hit more shots than I missed, but I missed quite a few, and that definitely feels like it's pretty demoralizing when you miss a Golden Gun shot. Uh, and then you're, you don't have the survivability of Assassin's Cowl. Right, so I just ended up just running Assassin's Cowl the entire time. I also tried Star Eater Scales uh, with Blade Barrage, and I mean that's a, pretty much a guaranteed hit. You're not going to miss your your Blade Barrage. You're going to do a lot of damage, but you know if you die before you build up your Feast of Light times four, or if you just don't get all your orbs before damage, which it happens, then you're not really capitalizing on the super that much. I also tried Shards of Galanor. Unfortunately, it wasn't giving me my super back for every single damage phase, so that didn't feel worth it at all because it's not like Shards of Galanor buffs Blade Barrage, it just buffs the cooldown. Um, so, yeah, my recommendation here would just be go go with Assassin's Cowl, bring in a hand cannon uh, or a bow, but a hand cannon would be better here um, in general for ad clear and uh, stunning the unstops. You can use Lament to melt down the unstoppables and use Lingering Dread to uh, apply slow to the boss to increase your damage while Radiant, right? Uh, from Torch. I think it's Torch. Let's see. Torch. While Radiant, deal increased weapon damage to combatants affected by Strand and Stasis debuffs, right? So the strategy here is to, uh, when damage starts, throw out your knife, your knife trick. Uh, that's going to debuff the boss from revitalizing blast so they're 15 percent weakened it's going to make me radiant for 25 percent more weapon damage uh, then i can use my blade barrage to get that extra damage on the weakened target and then i can use uh 
or, or sorry, I would, yeah, I would throw my knife, weaken the target, uh, hit him with Lingering Dread to slow, to apply a stasis debuff so that I get more weapon damage, uh, then fit in my Blade Barrage, and then just go into Lament, right? So I'm Radiant, boss is debuffed, uh, I've got a little damage buff from, from being, uh, from, uh, doing damage on a stasis debuff target from Lingering Dread. Yeah, so that was basically the most efficient way to go about it. Um, and then, yeah, everything else in the build is just kind of pretty straightforward here. If you want, you can take a look. Um, actually, this I was using Surges, so I was using at least double Solar Surges. Um, and then I was using Dexterity here just to pull out Lament faster. But other than that, everything was pretty much the same, right? I think I went with... Uh, bomber here and time dilation and double solar surge and a harmonic dexterity um but yeah so that's that's basically the build all right so change of plans here i'm actually going to break up this video into two parts um just keep them individual because um, I don't want to talk about all of the yields that I got, uh, you know, the results from, from this farm, uh, from all the Artifice armor I got, and the uh, high stat armor, because I think it deserves a video all by itself, where I can go into uh, into a little further depth. So, just going to keep this um, short enough here with uh, talking about the actual builds that I used on Hunter for Solar Surge uh, with the current seasonal artifact, and... Uh, show you these clips here of beaten down Rathiel. If you want, you can check the timestamps and go straight to the last clip, which is at around the 13 minute 45 second mark. And uh, that is a full un unedited uh, run where we almost phased uh, one phase the boss uh, and did the most amount of damage, I think, out of all the runs that we did uh, for me being on Hunter instead of Strand. Um, and. Uh, and it was a, actually a flawless run as well. I, I didn't die at least, so that was kind of nice. So I just wanted to put that one unedited clip in there. It's only like two minutes long, and the rest is just uh, just us taking out uh, taking out the boss and uh, showing you kind of the gameplay loop for damage and taking care of the unstops, which are kind of the two main important parts, the boss and the unstoppables, uh, if you don't one face. So anyways, I will catch you in the next video to talk more about optimizing high stat armor, how I go about it with Dim, D2 armor picker, um, and uh, what parameters I, I set for myself and filtering out my own uh, armor because obviously it builds up so much that you can't keep everything and um, if you're farming a lot all at once then you have to, you know, you kind of have to be ruthless about uh, deleting stuff. So I'll talk more about that uh, in the other video.